Good morning. Good morning. Today is a feast day of Cosmos and Damien. Cosmos and Damien were the twin brothers who spent their lives healing others. Being Christian, they were filled with spirit of charity and never took money for their services. They treated the rich and the poor alike. Their charity and Christian witnesses won over many converts to the, the faith. In the, in the year 287, they were captured in order to deny their faith in Christ. Cosmos and Damien refused, and they were sentenced to torture and eventually martyred for their faith. They are the patron saints of doctors. Please stand and join us singing our gathering hymn, Alleluia, Give the Glory. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Father. We come together this morning to celebrate the feast day of Saints Cosmas and Damien, the twin brothers and martyrs of the early church. And so under their intercession, brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May you be magnified, O Lord, by the reverend memory of your saints, Cosmos and Damien. 
For with providence beyond words you have conferred on them everlasting glory, and on us your unfailing help, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Reading from the book of Haggai. On the first day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came through to the prophet Haggai, to the governor of Judah, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtuel, and to the high priest Joshua, son of Jehozadak. Thus says the Lord of hosts, this people says, the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then this word of the Lord came through to Haggai the prophet. It is time for you to dwell in your own paneled houses, while this house lies in ruins. Now thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have sown much, but have brought in little. You have eaten, but not been satisfied. You have drunk, but not been exhilarated. You have clothed yourselves, but not been warmed. And whoever earned wages, earn them for a bag with holes in it. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up into the hill country, bring timber and build the house that I may take pleasure in it and receive my glory, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening, and he was greatly perplexed because some were saying, John has been raised from the dead. Others were saying, Elijah has appeared. And still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. But Herod said, John I beheaded. Who then is this whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Heard at the beginning of Mass, boys and girls, both by our um, reader who did the introduction and then what I said, we celebrate today the feast day of twin saints, two brothers, Saints Cosmas and Damien. Do we have any twins here at St. Mark? Are there any pairs of twins? We have some twins? Okay, very good. So that's, so in a very special way, Saints Cosmas and Damien, the patron saint of twins and of course the patron saints of doctors because they themselves were early doctors. They were physicians in the early days of the church. It gives us good cause to think about what we mean when we say that we celebrate these saints. What does it mean for us to have all these saints in the church that we have different days for? That we tell their stories and thank God for them and pray to their intercession and celebrate them. It's one of the very beautiful things about our tradition in our Catholic Church because it gives us so many people to look up to. It gives us so many great examples of people who have gone before us and have done a very, very, very good job at living their lives for Jesus, at being good Christians, being good Catholics. The Church has all these saints. The Church tells us about all these saints, and they uphold all these saints so that we realize that even when things get difficult in our faith, even when things can be confusing or we don't understand all the time, or we don't really want to do the things that Jesus calls us to do, we have these great examples, these great role models to look to to say, no, it was possible for them. If it was possible for them, then it's possible for me. So many of the saints were just normal people normal boys and girls and then normal adults that did their best to live normal lives, but then God called them to something even greater. God called them to something more wonderful so that they themselves could be examples for everyone around them. I'm wearing red today because Cosmos and Damien ultimately paid the ultimate price for their faith. They died for their faith. They loved Jesus so much that they refused to say anything against him. And at that time, that was a bad, it was a bad time for people who were Christian to be alive and to be out in public because it was not legal to be a Christian. And so they paid the ultimate price. Another one of the very neat things in our church with saints that we have is what we call relics. Have any of you ever heard of relics? The relics of saints are either their bodies where they're buried, or parts of the things that they had, parts of their clothing, a book they might have had, or something that was special to them that we uphold in the church as sacred. And we do that for a number of reasons. The most important thing to remember, boys and girls, is that our bodies, as human beings, and we're made in the image of God, our bodies are holy. Our bodies are very, very sacred to God because He created them. That's why we should always do everything we can to take care of our own bodies. And so when we die, when we go to heaven, when our souls go to heaven, and our bodies remain here on earth, it's important for us to treat that body with a great deal of respect. That's why we have nice graveyards and cemeteries and place where our bodies can be laid to rest. The saints are no different. When a saint dies, their body the part of them that remains here on earth stands as a constant reminder of what they did for us, of what they did for the church and for Jesus. And so we have tombs of the saints. We call them shrines. Places where Christians, where Catholics can go and in a very special way be connected to that saint. 
When I was in Rome, I only lived about three or four blocks from the tomb of Saints Cosmas and Damien. Very often when I would be walking to school or walking somewhere in that city, I could go right into the church where Saints Cosmas and Damien were buried, thank them for what they did, and ask them to help strengthen me. Help strengthen me in my own faith or help me in just some tiny share of that faith that you had. Another good story about a saint, when I was this past April, just this past April, on April 25th after Easter, I had some time off school, and so I went on a little vacation in Italy and went up north to a city called Venice. Venice is a really interesting city because all of the streets there are made of water. The streets, the whole city is built on on like a lagoon of a part of the ocean. And so if you want to get from one part to the next, you have to get in what they call a gondola, which is a big boat, and some guy with a big stick takes you to the other part of the city. Their taxis are made of are, are boats. Their cars there are all boats. The whole city is on water. It's a very neat city to go visit, and it's very famous. And I was there in Venice with two or three friends, and I got a phone call from back home from back here in the Archdiocese, and it was by a priest named Father Eric Johnson. He works downtown, and he is the vicar for clergy. That means, you know, in some sense, he's the one that calls us to tell us what our assignments are, what it is that the Archbishop wants us to do, and anything that we do with the Archdiocese, he's our person. So I knew when he was calling, he was going to tell me what my assignment was. That means where I was going to go when I came home from Rome. And we know where that is, right? Right here. So he called me, and I was sitting there in Venice and talked to him for a bit, and he said, the Archbishop wants you to go to St. Mark on the south side of Indianapolis. Of course, I was very excited because I was from this side of town. I knew a little bit about St. Mark, and I knew that it was a great place. So I hung up the phone, and I told my friends who I was with, I just got my assignment. I'm going to a place called St. Mark. I didn't think about this at the time, but the other priest I was with all lit up and said, are you serious? And I said, yeah. And they said, do you not see the coincidence right now? And I said, no. And I said, we were standing right in front of the cathedral in Venice, which is where St. Mark is buried. St. Mark's body is in one of the most magnificent, greatest cathedrals in all of Europe, which is in Venice. It was brought there a long time ago through Sort of an interesting story that I might tell you sometime, but St. Mark was there. Right where I was the day that I found out that I was coming to St. Mark. It was an incredible, graceful moment, and so immediately I went inside, found the tomb of this saint who wrote one of the Gospels, who was cousins with St. Barnabas, the parish I grew up in, and was a companion of St. Paul. And I went and immediately began to pray that he would help me as the pastor of this parish, a parish that was named in honor of him. That's the great thing about the saints, is we can treat them like our friends. All of you can think about a saint, can find a favorite saint that you know their story or you've heard something about them, whoever it might be, your own namesake, if you're named after a saint, St. Mark, the parish you're at, or any of the saints. And whenever, just like you would turn to a friend when you need something or when you're troubled or if you're excited about something, you can also turn to the saints in your prayer and ask them to help you. Because what do they do? They're with God. Saints are in heaven with God. No one is closer to Jesus than the saints. So as soon as you ask them for help, they are able to turn directly to God and Jesus, who they're with, and ask them to help you. Just like Mary. Who is, one of the, who is the greatest of the saints. All the other saints can do that too. And so on this day, we, we thank God, especially for saints Cosmas and Damien, the saints we celebrate now. We always thank God here for St. Mark and ask for his intercession in a special way. And for all of our saints who show us examples of great lives and lead us all closer to Jesus. And so on this day, in a special way, we're going to pray for one of our classes, and we're going to pray for them through the intercession of St. Mark. And so if everyone that is going on the the camping trip would please stand, and all their chaperones who happen to be here as well. I believe that's the sixth grade, is that right? All of our sixth graders, and if there's any chaperones here with them, 
Please stand, and we're going to pray for them, and we're going to pray through the intercession of St. Mark. Oftentimes when you pray to a saint, if you end the prayer with that saint's name, if I end the prayer and say, St. Mark, you would all respond with, pray for us. Have you ever done that before? St. Mark, pray for us. Okay, we're going to do that now as well. Ready? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon this class who will be traveling for their class trip on this day. We ask especially that you keep them safe as they travel, you keep them close together as a class, you help them realize that in all they do, they do it for the honor of your name and for St. Mark Catholic Church and Catholic School. And so in a special way, we now ask for the intercession of St. Mark the Evangelist, who taught us in the world so much about the life of Christ through his gospel. We ask that through his prayers and intercessions, they be kept safe. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. St. Mark, Amen. Let us now turn to God with our needs and bring forth our prayers of petition. For the Holy Catholic Church, for Pope Francis, Archbishop Thompson, Father Tim, and for all priests and deacons who lead and serve the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the president and for the leaders of all nations, that they would join Saints Cosmos and Damien in modeling love, mercy, and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our school community, that we would serve others in all that we do and work together to love others as Christ loves us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, our, prayer. hear our prayer. For the poor, the sick, and the unemployed, for those suffering from depression or addiction, and for all those in any kind of danger, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the intentions of the Slick family, for him this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these our prayers, and if they be your will, to grant them through Christ our Lord. Let us go to 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the church in us. For the praise and glory of his name, for our right and glory of all his church. In honor of this precious death of your just ones, O Lord, we come to offer that sacrifice from which all martyrdom draws its origin, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs, Cosmos and Damien, poured out like Christ's, to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble but so strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with all the powers of angels we praise you. We worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my life, but only save the Lord of my soul.
Let us pray. Preserve in us your gifts, O Lord, and may what we have received at your hands as we commemorate the martyrs, saints Cosmos and Damien, bring us healing and salvation and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder for our daily Mass goers that there will not be any Mass tomorrow or any communion service or anything as I will be gone. And so if there's anyone here that you know of that might not have that memo, please let them know so they don't show up and there's no one here tomorrow. And I will be back on Tuesday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks.